my goodness. My goodness. I was at the gym maybe like half an hour ago. Okay, I came back from the gym like half an hour ago, but I went there like even earlier before then. And whilst I was in the middle of my workout, you know, we're just chilling, just having some fun listening to the podcast while on the treadmill after doing all my lifting. I was getting notification after notification after notification after notification after notification, eight gosh darn notifications for Detroit Red Wings goals. I saw the first one pop up and I was like, oh, okay, Shane Goss to spare scored. Nice. one nothing lead by the Wings with Perron and Valeno getting the assist. Okay, nice, quick, and early start here for Detroit. But then as my workout continued, the notifications just kept on coming because the Wings started scoring more and more goals and they end up winning against the Washington Capitals 8-3. My goodness. My goodness, I did not have time to sit down and watch this game from start to finish, but I did catch up with some of the highlights. You know, they're posted all over social media. They're tough to avoid. But Detroit, my goodness, this could be one of the best days, I feel, in terms of instilling confidence in the Red Wings fan base. Not only because you beat the Washington Capitals by over double their score, but because right now the Tampa Bay Lightning, they're down 4-2 to the Philadelphia Flyers in the third period. And right now as well, the Toronto Maple Leafs are losing 6-2 to the Vegas Golden Knights in the third period. So at the moment, there are some really good games going on in the National Hockey League. If you're scorekeeping, if you're doing the out-of-town scoreboard, you want to see what the Red Wings and their playoff chances may be looking like after tonight's action because a win like this not only instills crazy confidence in your team but seeing the other teams go out there and lose in the ways that they are it makes things even more fun to stomach because right now this seems to be Steve Iserman's Iser plan coming to fruition and really presenting itself, unraveling itself from the cocoon that was years and years of poor finishes and high draft picks. You may not even have expected the Red Wings to be a quote unquote contender right now, considering all the rumors about them potentially selling off guys, other rumors of them getting younger, longer term players, but just take a look at the breakdown in the game that we saw tonight. Three points out of Lucas Raymond. Okay, one goal, two assists. That's the fourth overall pick back from 2020. A Steve Eiserman redemption pick, considering that he was taken by a team that was last overall in that year's draft, but they slipped all the way to fourth in the entry draft. You had JT Comfer. Two points tonight, a goal and an assist. Not to mention two points out of David Perron, Dylan Larkin, Patrick Kane, and Joe Valeno. A bunch of these guys were Steve Eiserman free agent pickups. Of course, Patty Kane is the big one, but you also have JT Comfer. You also have David Perron. This is Steve Eiserman's depth really coming to the forefront and making themselves known as they frequently have been throughout the season. Not to mention the defense. You got points out of Shane Goss to spare. He had two goals on the night. Very nice to see. Yet another one of these Steve Eiserman acquisitions. It seems to be like with the way this team has been coagulating the past few weeks, you could really start to see more of the confidence and the cohesion with their strategies and their talent profiles. Sure, you could have said last year, yeah, Shane Goss to spare is a very good defender. Like, he'll score a lot of points. Maybe not the best in his own zone, but he's a good offensive defender at the very least. Andrew Kopp, JT Comfer, two guys that are pretty similar, but who both have pretty all right middle six center value. Why exactly are the Wings going this direction, going with the older guys? Who really knows? But hey, who cares? They're winning games left, right, and center, and they're still in that Atlantic Division race. Now, they need to catch up a little bit to Toronto, and Florida's doing really well. They're beating the Sabres right now, so maybe Florida's a little bit too far out of their cross hairs, but Toronto for sure. The Wings should project it to be behind Toronto by about two points, and the Leafs have a few games in hand after tonight's action, assuming they lose, of course, to Vegas, but they're losing 6-2, so I don't think they come back and win. But either way, this wildcard race for Detroit is looking pretty solid, considering that they just defeated the team that is the biggest threat to taking away one of those two wild cards. Washington has 63 points right now. The Wings have 72. The second wild card is Tampa Bay. They're losing to Philadelphia. They've got 69 points. So for the Wings, this is certainly a good sign. And if you wanted to just go over some of the results from the actual game itself, you know, 
I mean, I get it. We could go out there and talk about each of the individual goals. We can talk about the power play. It clicked today. Even the penalty kill kind of clicked today. Sure, the Wings allowed a power play goal against on one of the two power play opportunities the Capitals had, but the Wings also scored a shorty, which was nice to see. But realistically, when you talk about games like these, 8-3... You know, I say this all the time, especially since we heard it from Yannick Hansen on Sportsnet 650 here in Vancouver, but once a game starts to run away from you, once it becomes 4-1, 5-2, 6-2 even, that's when you start to realize, okay, there's nothing really that we can learn, quote-unquote, from this game. And you can say that it was competitive the entire way through, it's not like the Capitals stopped trying, but the leads, you know, the Wings had three, four goal leads in this one, they had multi-goal leads for the majority of the game. For one, it's a good thing to see that the Wings are capable of doing this, and it's great to see the guys go out there and score points in the ways that they have. But at the same time, once you get up to those multi-goal leads, etc., like, what else is there to learn? The Wings just have to sit back, relax, try to capitalize on whenever opportunities are presented in front of them and make sure that the Capitals don't come back. And for the most part, they did that. They won very convincingly in this game. And if you go over to the deserve to win o meter from moneypuck.com, I mean, the Wings honestly should have lost according to the metric on the website. It's just when it comes to the expected goals, I mean, Detroit really started to take over in that second period. They started capitalizing a whole bunch. And then in the third, whilst the Washington Capitals were trying to get back in it, that's when the Wings just said, okay, well, we're just going to start scoring even more now and take over this game in terms of its overall offense. So with all the results on paper, with some of these goals going in, you love to see Debrinket from Larkin and Kane. Beautiful. You love to see Larkin from Raymond and Mata. You love to see Patrick Kane going out there with two assists. This guy has been probably the best free agent acquisition the Red Wings have made in years. Am I being hyperbolic when I say that? Patrick Kane, man, if they can re-sign this guy, then boom, baby. That is exactly what I think the Wings should be going out there and targeting. And you even talk about the back end. I mean, we had already talked about Gossespair getting all those goals, but even on a night where Alex Lyon lets in three goals on 21 shots against, he still comes out with the victory. 857 save percentage, which isn't like the best, but it's still good enough to get the win when your team scores eight gosh darn goals. So at the end of the day, this is just a total wagon of a win. One of these games where you could just walk out of it and be happy, be happy for the result with the wings, be happy for the out of town scoreboard, Tampa Bay, Toronto, these teams are all going out there with not too great of a result and that helps out Detroit tremendously. And ultimately, this is the maybe starting point, do you want to say, of the belief? Is this it? Is this the belief in the Iser plan? Not for the long term, but just for now. Taking a look at where they are in the standings, taking a look at how they're sort of locking themselves into that wildcard spot, if not maybe a third overall spot in the Atlantic Division. And for the Capitals fans looking and tuning into this video, hey, I'm sorry, but this is like kind of the worst case scenario for your team. You end up losing 8-3, which in itself is already pretty bad, and Alex Ovechkin doesn't score a goal. He got an assist, but no goal. Definitely not the ideal situation for Caps fans. You probably would have wanted to see Ovi score a little bit more just so you're able to get that Gretzky record a little bit closer in there. But either way, thoughts in the comment section below about the Detroit Red Wings and the Washington Capitals. It is an 8-3 victory for Motown. And Steve Eiserman, man, his eyes are plan is really showing off. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Irish Roll 9 And bye.